15 plus. Pretty quick serves right out of the block here from Zverev. He's been averaging around 200, and those both uh, were at 210 and 209. So looking for some cheap points perhaps early on. One of the most interesting things that we've seen in this tournament. Look at this from Alcaraz. Second serve returns, and there it is again, glaringly obvious that wow. backhand. Only making 63%. Oh, I wouldn't have picked that. Yep. Patch, let me throw this one at you. When you stand side on, I'm sitting here side on watching Carlos return. On that second serve, he's actually too aggressive. It's a hard court. Let the ball come to you. Stand square. Don't change your eye line. Just have a look at the slow mo of Zverev. Done from the German in that opening game. Nice game. But I agree with you, Wally. It's going to be interesting to watch Carlos on the return, not just on the second serve return, but also on that first serve return. I think he is going to have to blend it from deep and up. Well, I, well, I think the bounce is what gives a lot of players trouble from Sverev's serve. Uh, uh, look, it, it's big and it's accurate and it's a lot of aces. I mean, it's a, a wonderful asset for him to have, but he's also coming from six foot six, a long arm, and that ball comes down from. A heck of a big height and it bounces high so that bounce gives the return or makes the returner I, I think adjust might take a while 60 40 from the win predictor Carlos has been a pretty decent lumberjack on the tennis tour for players against uh, that are pretty tall six foot or taller since Madrid Masters back in 2022 he's played them on 24 occasions and he's won 21 of them just Medvedev once and a couple of times does Verev he's lost to these big servers Love 15. Carlos Senior, right behind Albert Molina, who's in the grey jersey in the front there. And there is Samuel Lopez. Won't be too concerned about that. Not too many doubles generally come off the racket of this man. That's just, just his ninth of the tournament. Well, you can't always pick up where you left off, can you? Love. And he certainly hasn't. Just finding his way and a little rusty in this first game or two. Only faced six break points in the entire tournament so far, save five of them. Here's three already for Zverev.
couldn't be a more perfect start. Well, maybe those first two serves as fair might have been an indication of how fast he was coming out of the blocks. He was ready, his heart rate was up, and he, he was already thumping that serve in the first two points. And that's what you notice, Mark. And Carlos has been a bit of the polar opposite, hasn't he? Fifteen or massive serving. Yep. Thirty. 15. Continuing the trend, 8Ks up on his tournament average in these opening couple of games. <laughs> Never beaten a top five player at a major. 0 for 10 is Sasha. Just two wins out of 16 against top 10 players at these tournaments. That's a strange sort of record, though, for someone of this quality. Almost doesn't make sense. tonight given the start that we've seen from him three laps very yeah not only that but in potential best of five matches there was another one with rafa that he played back in 2019 lost that as well so actually over 11 overall in these kind of formats of matches and you would think that the way that Zverev plays as what he was saying that kind of drags mistakes from you he extends rallies he kind of wears you down that that stat would actually be far more like his normal top 10 record which is 48 wins and 62 losses which is uh, much more understandable as you say Fitzy Zverev has been to the semi-finals here back in 2020. Wants to uh, sit to pass on that particular occasion, and obviously just the one set away from winning the U.S. Open in the same year. Lost to Dominic Team from a couple of sets up. But he's got the early break, and more often than not, he pushes on and takes it. What can Alcaraz do? First and foremost, he can find his range.
generally speaking. 15 all. I don't like seeing the approach shot across court for a right hander straight into the running forehand of Sverev. And he can swing at this and hurt you. So tactically, no. But Carlos's forehand is so big that he's a bit different to most players because normally he gets more purchase on it and makes the opposition stretch and reach for that ball. Come on, you're kidding me. There's a bit of flair that we saw a lot of two nights ago. Look for all 13, money like he was 15. preparing to come over that topspin forehand volley and then does this. He's got a creative mind, hasn't he, on a court? Showed you the stat for Carlos missing returns on that backhand side that was somewhat surprising coming into this match. Zverev, as is normal for him, missing way more off the forehand off the first serve return and second, which is why Carlos went there. Both players very respectful about the potential from their opponent on the return, both serving quick. Couldn't be much worse for Alcaraz here in the first few minutes. Nice some shot. 155Ks off the strings of Zverev down the line. Turn apart from the mistakes that come from that side for the German is also it's a heavily spun ball it tends to drop mid-court which allows Alcaraz to get onto his first shot quickly after the serve Examination tonight. Is that at least three games to one for set? calling out their loyalties. Fifteen love.
Just one first serve so far, has the German. This is flawless. Yeah. And how competent did he look there That's at the net? He read yeah. that passing shot beautifully. As you normally would. You, if you volley here with the first volley into that corner, you cover the line more often than not. And he was already half a step. This serve is uh, almost unplayable 40, at the moment, yeah. isn't it? girlfriend little clap she Zverev must be impressed as well this has been this about is. as good as we've seen from Zverev even since Sydney at the United Cup 4-1 this has been perfect Wally I mean he couldn't have come out and put down a better marker could he yeah well you know we know the serve is good I mean it's an awesome serve and he'll, he'll can he may not serve quite this well for the duration of the match but it'll be close the other thing about Zverev, though, he stands a little further back. He's rangy. He plays a little deeper. You, you can't go through him. Like, you, it's it's a very different matchup than uh, Kecmanovic. And as I'm sitting here watching this, I kind of think, and I, I'm so impressed with Carlos's all-court game, don't get me wrong, but I almost feel like I've got to see a little bit of rapper in him. He's got to work the point. He's got the little escape valve to go to the forehand, but he's got to work for it. He's got to get the big fella on the run. He's got to use some angles. He's got to use his slice. He's got to use his drop shot. He's got Time. to extend the rallies. I mean, he might catch fire and prove me wrong, but just just slow down and work a little harder. Sasha, they're going to reach the semis of a slam for a seventh time. That would move him just one ahead of the great Michael Stick, somebody that Wally knows very well. He was former coach of the German. Boris Becker with... Uh, 18 Grand Slam semi-finals. I retired him. <laughs> See, that, that's what I mean. I mean, Love the other night he was 15. perfect and that was going in, but tonight, it's a different night. You know, just work a little harder. Three quarters heavy. Work him over. You know, Wally is nothing but honest, if not honest. He's, you know, we all brag that he coached Michael Stick. He immediately says, well, I... Put him into retirement actually my coaching didn't sort of suit him honest guy Ladies. weren't coaching him when i beat him were you wally i think so yes <laughs> <laughs> mark petty retired wally masseur He's just going to need time to settle down. This, the pace of shot, the serve, the bounce on the serve is all different to what he's faced. And uh, the form is there, just under the surface. I think while he's right, just let him settle down and uh, work a little bit harder, break a sweat. The ship will right itself. Oh. He's missing. Yeah, but it's, it's not on Fitzy. It's, there's no life in the court. 15, Nothing's bouncing 13. that high. Everything's coming through just that little bit lower. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of respect. There was no angle to work with. It's all just, I guess he, he's almost too amped up. Just settle. This is how he plays, though. He goes after it, doesn't he? And, you know, when you're playing a big server, don't try to match him for pace. Zero is he's serving within himself. Carlos has got to serve within himself. Uh, 
that's the point. Settle down. 10, 15 shot runners, whatever it takes. With this good advice, I can't believe Wally got out of coaching so early. Oh, I had a big future until Petch Beach did. What you want to do is try to erode the confidence in that shot. Yeah, I think as the match goes on, none of us know who's going to win this, but the, as the match goes on, he'll work that forehand more and more, you would expect. Of Zverev's. showing isn't he right now why he's been yes. one of the elite in men's tennis for a very long time gee that backhand is good isn't it repetition of very good technique there If you hit a forehand across court into a running forehand, you're asking for trouble. That's twice now Carlos has done it. When you come in after it, it's dangerous. If you stay back, it's, of course it's fine. Six now, but he did have three consecutive year end top 10 finishes before he was 22, and that put him in a very elite company with people that made world number one apart from one that was Borg, McEnroe, Lendl, Willander, Becker, Edberg, Agassi, Sampras, Chang the only one that never made it to world number one that's managed to achieve that. Hewitt, Roddick, Nadal, Djokovic that's how good he was, very young, and we're reminiscing right now and we're also reminiscing about this man 
Wilmington Chan. Who's that blonde two to the right of Cashy? Fitzy, do you recognise her? Uh, I do recognise her. That is, uh, that's my wife, Jenny. But that's the great Pat Cash there that we saw. Let's listen. The great Pat Cash, who won Wimbledon in 1987. A great friend of Wally and I, and you, Pitch. What an athlete he was. a few blasts from the past. I was his worst ever loss, he said in his autobiography. Did he? <laughs> yeah. He may well have been right. <laughs> Don't worry, matey. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Gee, he was a good athlete. He, yeah. yeah. He beat Ivan Lendl in the final of that when wouldn't beat Jimmy Connors in the semis. Won the Davis Cup almost single-handedly in 1986 for Australia. Lost in the very first Australian Open here at Melbourne Park to Mats Villander in a tough, tough five-set final. <laughs> Gee, he's uh, been shaken up by this start from Sverev, hasn't he? Love. Alcaraz. Well, this is good. Just get it out of the way. 6-1, move on. But I didn't mind the play there. Second serve, stand back, high, heavy. Just got to adopt a bit of a clay quarters mentality for a little while here does Carlos just get himself into the contest shows just how vibrant this man is right now we thought perhaps with another 13 hour plus run through to the quarterfinals like he had at the US Open there may just be a little sugar in the tank not so Again. more like nitroglycerin Rapid, deadly, and absolutely perfect. Zverev takes it, 6-1. get down a break early in the second after this uh, after the start by the opposition because he, his game is so big and he's he's relaxed and hitting the ball well swear of here playing like he's got nothing to lose playing just like he's got everything to gain here and looking dangerous doesn't want to get down a break early Carlos Thirty fifteen. smoothly onto that doesn't it it must be so difficult for him to fight that natural inclination to take the ball on especially when you can do it as well as that when you can move onto the ball with this live movement in position 
this is he's like a gazelle let's just take a little look at what uh, Alcaraz is facing out here in terms of accuracy and as you can see here within a, a couple of feet of the line this is what he has been uh, pumping into the court with an extra 5 Ks on average on these first serves but the accuracy and obviously again when you look at these don't forget these balls particularly on the uh, outside where the 86 percent number is sitting is on a diagonal so there's an awful lot of baseline that Alcaraz is having to try and protect just to get the ball back into play let alone neutralize this serve Fifteen love. Who knows? Good and tired, maybe uh, still very pertinent when the outcome of this match is decided. 10 to 11 here in Melbourne in the evening. Well, he's just a tiny bit out of sorts, Wally, it seems. I mean, the other night he picked exactly the right time to hit drop shots, uh, when to come in. All his shot selection was beautiful. That one, though, was a miss. Yeah, it's all happening a little bit quickly for him. He's unsettled. He's playing fast. The point previous I quite liked until he got a bit excited with the backhand down the line. Just patient, patient. Got all night. Interesting watching Zverev move off the ball at times tonight already, even though he's been dominating, he's been covering the drop shot from Alcaraz. We know it's one of his big weapons. We know he loves to use it to to uh, just pull you closer to the baseline, but just to change the pattern of some of these rallies, particularly after his own serve. has been the least successful with the drop shot out of all the 14, eight quarter finalists that we've had and you can kind of see why there yeah i'm not sure he needs to play this when it's up high like that go hard with a ground stroke i mean that's his forte go for it into the corner i mean he's got one of the best backhands in the world and he chose a drop shot over the in favor of it Spirit so far. One game all seconds. They have very similar forehand profiles these days. Um, Alcaraz has lost about 400 RPM since 2022 on his forehand, flattened it out massively, and so it's brought it down to about 3,000, which is where Sasha sits. But he doesn't have that ability here to generate those short angles still. They both have exactly the same pace off the forehand side as well. As Thank lightning fast as Alcaraz looks, it is a big ball that comes from Zverev's strings.
15 left. Took his medicine there, just came up through the middle of the court and tried to defend the net, did so. What do you think of that play, Wally? Up high to Sferro's forehand. Yes, and I'd like to see a few kicking serves as first serves out to the backhand and then getting them running high on the forehand. You know, it's, it's a clay court play. Just adopt a bit of a clay court mentality. Sferro, he's not quite as... He doesn't play as close to the line as, say, Sinot or Rublev. You can rally with him. Just, just relax. Rally. Wait. Super coach pitch. <laughs> Or just hit winners. <laughs> 40 love. You've got to love a super coach. But it's just remarkable down here. He's just been in a frenzy. Like, it's... You just feel like... Just grabbing him, saying, mate, relax. He's 20 years old, Wally. He's excited. <laughs> A little uh, too early 14, to see this, but 15. his forehand length looks exceptional from Zara. I've done a number of his matches here, and he hasn't looked as though he's been able to ping the ball as close to his opponent's baseline as frequently as he has tonight. And that is, of course, extracting the error from Alcaraz, who has that natural tendency to try and keep taking it on. But the one thing's for sure, the 20-year-old is going to battle. And he survives his second service game of this second set. Fits in the point you make about him just being 20 years of age, of course. You know, you're absolutely right, there's so much more to come. But I always think of the time, you know, we spent with Leighton in Davis Cup. Leighton was unbelievable at winning with what he had on the day. Not his best game. He would accept where he was at and then just fight the battle. I mean, it's almost as though Carlos has got the memory of two nights ago in his mind and that's the benchmark. That's where he has to play. But it's a different paradigm, different opponent, different look, different quality of shot coming at him. Just got to learn to win with what he's got on the night. Time. Always an easy quality for a 20 year old to have, but uh, patience is most definitely an action in a tennis match, just trying to bide your time. Sometimes you need the patience of an immortal, but it's early stages of this quarter final. And Alcaraz just starting to hold on to serve a little more comfortably. You know, I've watched Spiro closely over the last month, and my first thought on his volleys in Perth when I saw in uh, the United Cup when I saw him was that it, it, they sh they should improve a bit but ever s for the last three weeks I feel like they're they're very solid like he he comes up with some clutch volleying at the right time. Let's for sure. So you're saying he improved them quickly? No, I, no, I think I misread them a little bit. I'm not saying he <laughs> improved them quickly, but he did miss a few early when, early in the summer and uh, wasn't sure he came in all the time on the right ball, but. In the last three or four matches I've watched of him, gee, he's volleyed well. So it's a good backup for his baseline game.
And of course, this serve is one of the best. Let. Second serve. I should have waited to say that after this second serve, just in case I put the commentator's curse on him. Very few dubs from uh, Zverev these days. 66 aces coming into this match, just the 11 double faults and that, that one to six is kind of Frederer range <laughs> he's put all that nightmare of the second serve double faults behind him How do you count to the serving, Wally? 14. You just have to ride it. I think Petch, big servers, love free points. Get as many back as possible. Change your position. Up, back. Try to give him a different look. Just got to respect it. Zverev is just playing extraordinarily Two, well. Games and, all you know, maybe at this point it's a case of, you said at the last game, Pitch, hang on to your serve. For Alcaraz, he's got to put all his energy and concentration into hanging on to his serve, not over serve. Just let that scoreboard tick over. He, I mean, he'll come down a little bit. He'll come down. You've just got to wait for that moment and strike. say that's the Carlos Alcaraz we know and love right there but I think mentally he's just got to put this first set behind him and think about this one set but think about this game first but if he wins this second set the match then may start to turn but we're going to go down two sets to love against this serve success rate when he's played that shot in the tournament 75 percent of them have won him the point it's a good strategy for him it isn't a risk he has the nous to play it at the right time doesn't he intuitive clever tennis player and I like that serving, spot serving. He's been, it's almost like he's trying to match earlier in that first set in particular, trying to match Zverev for power. That's one seven, seven out wide. Previous serve was in the 180s, getting it to do something off the court. There were a couple of potential serve volleys in that game as well from Alcaraz, which we haven't seen so far tonight. He's trying to think through this problem. 3-2. As much as it was beautiful to watch somebody play the way that he did in the last match against Ketsmanovic, you know, we talk about statistics, we 
underline their greatness with uh, their CV, but beauty at times doesn't need a resume. You watch it with Carlos. We saw it on the opening point of this game, just how attractive his tennis can be out there on the court. But there is a part of you that loves to watch these great champions with their back against the wall getting tested like this tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, deep down, that's what creates the drama. It was like a plethora of ple pleasure the other night, wasn't yeah. it? With, with him just playing every shot in the book. But the opposition, with respect, is, was not quite like Zverev. Awfully good player, but not at this level. Not yet, anyway. What an amazing men's tournament it's been. It's been great on the women's side, but in terms of duration of matches and close matches, we just had the 33rd match today go to five sets between Medvedev and Hercatch. And that is uh, the most in the open era since the US Open back in 1983. 35 matches that year went to a deciding set. It's been epic. And there's more to come. Fifteen love. length shot from Zverev off his forehand and one that drops a little bit shorter and with Alcaraz prowling on that baseline he's going to take every opportunity when the German drops it there thank you what you've got how good was that thank you players ready thank you pure joy to fuse some of the forehand battle out here with some great cross-court lengths where if you look at the last couple of points and he is trying to play his forehand back down the line to get out of the forehand exchanges it puts a lot more pressure on that shot he does like to go there with that shot more often to bring his backhand into play mm -hmm. but against the power of Alcaraz not easy and here's two break points Well saved. 30, 40. I tell you what, the X factor there of Alcaraz nearly got him back into that point. It was it's where it probably couldn't have played that point any better.
this is good stuff now. And all of a sudden, though, yes. Alcaraz looks dangerous. But to Sverev's credit here, he really stands up and defends his turf for these last two points. with Wally more of the same no advantage is Thank you. Fifteen I can't help but feel, gee, it's dangerous on a hard court to play this. Good hustle from Sverre, by the way, for a big man. But the ball bounces so high, doesn't it, off the drop shot. It's got to be perfect. And when the pressure's on, gee, it's hard to play. Oh. Well, I think it's fraught with more danger than other parts of the game. Getting caught too far behind his own baseline. 15, 13. Pitch, he's been he's been impressive though so far tonight. You can't deny that, can you? He's he's really upped his ante here compared to the other rounds. I I, I think. Zverev normally against a lot of people would be a good two and a half meters That's behind his baseline. He was right up on the baseline looking for the drop shot there. You're right, Fitzy. It's a shot on a hard call that definitely comes with risk. I think for Carlos, most of the time it pays off for him.
I had a small criticism yes. on the drop shot, but I'd just like him to be another meter, half a meter at least, but preferably a meter further forward than where he's playing it from. First down has been dominated by Zverev. tactic even with a foreign as good as, as Carlos is he was lucky to get away with that he knows it contrasting emotions tense right now isn't it this is big Let's give this man Zverev yeah, some credit here. He Zverev. is playing to a high level. Did so and many great things in that rally. I'm not sure that should have been a lob. That's the creativity that he possesses, but something a little more solid there might have been better. That was risky to hit the lob there. Maybe a cross court with a big forehand. Now we're facing a very big moment. Pure impure emotions nothing better than that undiluted entertainment between these two and as he's taken the code violation he might as well step away regroup He comes out after surviving that and breaks the world number two. And he came in on the backhand again, didn't he? He made sure that he forced Alcaraz to beat him with his least potent shot. And it worked out perfectly for him. 
what a couple of arm wrestle games they were, Wally. Yeah, the first set was, it came and went far too quickly, but Alcaraz has dug his heels in, but he's being outplayed. He's just being outplayed, and not only is Zverev, he's hitting with real firepower from the back of the court, but how well is he scrambling? You know, he's dug back a couple of important slices, dug out some volleys. You know, he, he's not coming in on bluff. He's looking for the volley. He wants the volley. It just looks so positive. He is playing awfully well, and this Time. man is rattled. He gave the chair a pretty good kick when he went to sit down. Zverev has gotten to him. Well, the serve is a real luxury for this man, and he has been luxuriating in the lead ever since the start of this contest was in danger of trailing by the break, saving those couple of break points. There was a good chance for the world number two in that sixth game, but he paid a heavy price in the seventh. And Petch, I think the crowd are you know, they're waiting for a moment, they're waiting for something to happen to get behind Alcaraz. So saving those great points, he's really just keeping the crowd out of it too. Is Zverev. A bit deflated here. Yeah. That is 12 first serves in a row. Love. He's made 33 out of 37. And he is forcing Alcaraz in that last game to almost break him, having made every single first serve. Wow. Well, while he used the adjective rattled, I think it's on the money. He, he, he is. Stealing plays out of Alcaraz's playbook. But how serene no. does he look? Zverev looks completely calm. Shot selection just about perfect. And the other man's like a blowfly in a glass jar. Sometimes, you know, when you play with all that flair one day and you you come out the next, you expect to be able to do it again, don't you? And uh, well, he's right. You know, the, the opposition is different, a different player, a different scenario, a different night. Two dads. Carlos Senior, Carlitos' his dad, obviously coached him when he was uh, a younger age, got the technique in position. Let's pursue. But his son not in the position he would like to be in this quarterfinal. Great first step, hasn't he, Zverev, Wally? You had a good look at him running towards you there. Yeah, he really covers territory quite easily. I mean, he's so long limbed, isn't he? Love. But that first step, as you say, Petch, there's good anticipation. He knows what the likely outcome of that shot is, and he's halfway there. Unfortunately, that was just a little too good. But that's the type of shot Alcaraz has to come up with to win a point. I've got to admit, I'm in a tiny bit of shock here because I didn't, I didn't think it would evolve like this so drastically. We know how good Sverov is, but I'm, it was so vivid in my memory how well Alcaraz had played two days ago. I, I'd barely seen tennis played at that level, and yet 
on a new night. He's been he's been beaten soundly so far. Thirteen fifteen. Just keeps asking the question of that backhand pass. 30, 14. And he's been quick to get out some of the exchanges as well. That backhand down the line was a bit of a risk, but he absolutely gunned it. And Alcaraz couldn't get any advantage in the point. And here is a set point in the second set. Not bereft of ideas, but he can't execute them. Alcaraz and Zverev deservingly show up two sets to life. Can you both please push him? So, Pat, as I watch that backhand return, you know, I don't know if Andy Murray's watching this, but be great for Alcaraz just to spend a bit of time with Andy on a hard court and just talk about return and where to stand, how to let the ball come to you. You don't have to charge it. Let it come to you. There's a lot of pace in the ball. Use that pace. And then Andy could just teach him the finer points about the block and the chip grips. There's a bit of work to be done there. Tell you what, well, if he's going to uh, replicate it perfectly as sort of match conditions 15. here, and he's going to have to wait an entire half an hour to hit a second serve because that's how long it's been wow. since Alcaraz had seen a second serve. If you look at history, it doesn't bode well for Alcaraz here. 14, he hasn't won 15. from two sets to love down in his young career yet. And Sverev, in his 52 matches previously, when he's had a two love, two sets to love lead in Grand Slams, he's only ever lost once. 52 times. That was in the final of the US Open. So he'd be feeling awfully confident right now with Sasha Sperry. Shouldn't forget that when he rolled his ankle in that match against Rafa in the semis of Roland Garros, he was right on the cusp of becoming the world number one with Sasha at that particular stage. That's how well he was playing. That's how good a year he'd had all the way through to that particular stage. And when he did roll the ankle and when he came back, it looked as though it would be a while for him, but it wasn't.
to see now. Good thing for both these players that they can write their own history. And that's what Alcaraz will try and do tonight. Maybe two close sets. Yeah. In the remaining three sets, there's going to you'd expect at least one and probably two. So he's walking the tightrope, and all the marbles, all the odds are in Sfera's favour at the moment. Yeah. Maybe sometimes he's got too much choice. For Zila. Interesting approach shot. We saw Fed do that towards the back end of his career. Never really had a drop shot, did he? Fed for a long time. Felt as though it was a bit of a joke shot, but his rival made it something that he had to work on to try and beat him. Earning the right to go for the drop 14, shot. 15. He's not creating any time or space. He hasn't got Zverev on the back foot. Look where he is. And he's going cross court. The ball's got to travel so far at no pace. I mean, how do you beat a guy drop shotting cross court from the alley? I mean, maybe play a short slice to the service line. Oh. been unbelievable tonight. Like, he, ha he has not put a foot wrong with wow. the serving. Has been, it's just been an outrageous display of serving. But if I could just sum up Alcaraz's performance thus far, it's just been impatient. He's just not worked hard enough for the win. Fifteen. That was a silky backhand down the line. He had to coax it very quickly over the top of the net, but at just the right pace to get it to come down. He has not put a foot wrong. Fourteen. 
15. Very comfortable with his backhand as his first shot after his serves, Zverev. We've seen that over the course of his career. And when you serve to the Alcaraz backhand, more often than not, you're going to be prepared to the backhand. That's where he directs nearly 90% of his tra traffic off that backhand side of the return. And again, another game superior one. service game from Zverev, 2-1. Just a few scenes from the match that are seeing Zverev play the match of his career at a major. He was good against Alcaraz and Roland Garros. When he picked up his first ever top 10 win, he was great in that 4 out 40 oh. classic against Sinner of the US Open last year. This has been even better. Christoph Seller, you can just see with the uh, black and German flag on his front there. Physio for Sasha Zverev. And the German fans absolutely delighted with their man. This is unbelievable. He just he has no game plan. I think I think his mind is racing. racing. He can't just calm down, distill his thoughts. I don't think he can see a way forward at the minute. Well, this is serious now, to say the least. And when the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, and that is the problem for Alcaraz right now. <laughs> Velocity gets him out of that problem. Can he find another one to get himself out of this foxhole he finds himself in? Use. 
will he remember those two points in two and a half hours mark is the question like a crisis to narrow the focus. That's a bad sign too. No advantage. A bad, bad sign. When you are so desperate that you go for a 202k an hour second serve. Pitch, a minute ago you said he was fighting his way out of a foxhole. It's more like the Marianas Trench. He is a long way underwater. <laughs> He's been absolutely uh, bullied on the outside on his second serve as well as Alcaraz. He's went just one point out of 11 on that particular side. How good is that? When you look at that box, there's just no animation. Calmness, acceptance, and belief in their charge, their brother, their son. Count Ladowski is the man in the middle of uh, Alexander Senior and Misha. Also working hard to formulate the kind of performance we've seen tonight. Christoph Seller at the back. Alongside him, Dalabor Sarola. And together they put Zero back together, firstly physically and also mentally, to produce this kind of performance. Forty-six out of fifty-two first serves made. Yeah, he's 
all out of sorts now. 14, Incredible. 15. All going pear shaped. Amazing. It's hard to see how he can save himself here right now. Just the second point he's picked up against the second serve, but he's only face seven. She got there a little quicker than I think he thought he was going to. He could have kept two hands on the racket and manipulated that down the line, but that probably is a good insight into how he's feeling right now more than anything else. the world number two out here. 4 1, third set. Well, at times in a five set match, when you watch Sasha, particularly early on in this tournament, he was uh, simultaneously very bad and then very good. And even in the last couple of matches, at times you've seen that forehand kind of waver from the kind of performance that we've seen tonight but it has been absolutely on the money. And Alcaraz just simply from the get-go has had no solution to this kind of play. It's funny how the mind and the body go yeah. together though, isn't it? And when you, when you get a scrambled mind out here because things are going against you and you become unsure, then it's almost like your body fails Time. you or the coordination fails you. And he's missing balls by half a meter down the net at times of course he's completely out of sorts but a disorder there for Alcaraz at the changeover just 10 minutes shy of midnight in Melbourne and unlike one Spaniard back in 2022 I don't think this is going to be another miracle in Melbourne you, please, not the sequel
Let's. I'm not sure he entirely meant to miss the opening couple of points of this game. He would have liked to probably get the insurance break, but one thing it does do is, of course, is not allow Alcaraz any chance to get a bit of rhythm. Another reminder of this man's repertoire. Well, assuming he's going to hold his serve in the next game after this one, he's got two chances, hasn't he, to break. At 540 at one stage, early in that second set. What can he produce from a bag of tricks? Now, when you showed me the stat, Pitch, about his backhand return and how how much he missed compared to the forehand, it, it sort of shocked me a bit. But the bounce on this serve cannot do that backhand any good. It, it, it's tough to control, isn't it? feet in the air the ball off this racket maybe more maybe close to 10 so the first one Set. So has he opened the door? Probably not. Thank you, players are ready. Please. You know, it's interesting just watching Carlos return this serve, which has been awesome, obviously, tonight, but He's standing so close, he's attacking the second serve, and he's really flashing the blade. I mean, his racket probably should only be moving about six inches, just trying to meet the ball on its path, use the pace. So aggressive.
40, 30. He takes that 5 2 lead in the third. I think if you ask Carlos, that's probably going to be one thing he'll say. If I wasn't on the front foot, I felt as though those are the sort of shots that were beating me hands down as well. There have been a couple off the forehand side. We know just how gorgeous the backhand can be in those kind of situations. And there was just a little opening for Zverev to explore. And he shuts the door on that particular game in emphatic style. Time. to beat Alcaraz in Vienna back in 2021 without getting broken. He is close to repeating that feat once again here in Melbourne. Love 15. Oh, and tonight has had the pace of an F1 car, but the directional sense of my wife at times, isn't it? Wally, what does this tell you about Carlos? I mean, he he hasn't compromised even yet. He, he's played a few longer points, like you had suggested, but he, he's still playing with flair, isn't he, and, and finishing points quickly. Oh. Just tell you, maybe he hasn't learned to adapt yet in maybe, his young career. Maybe we expect too much. As good as he is, Fitzy, I guess there's work to be done. 14, 15. Particularly just, you know, certain areas of the game, like return. He hasn't served well tonight either. There's definitely room for improvement. Just his 12th Grand Slam. Already picked up a couple. Let's... I think a big part of the journey of being a pro is getting your worst match very close to your best. So a bit of work in that area. Not over yet. These are the tough games to win right here. And as I said the other night, 
<laughs> now, when you look at where he's at, Five his 12th major, he's picked up a couple. It took Novak 27 to pick up his third major. He has got time on his side in terms of the history books, but maybe not tonight. Well, we don't want to be premature. The match is still live. But there's definitely a few technical things Thank on hard court already. that we can look at, particularly this return. And if he gets the first point, the crowd involvement. He just showed us something right there. Sometimes the best ball in tennis is the one that just goes in. He loaded it up with height and spin, didn't he? Two quick serves, both have come back. Can Alcaraz. Fastest of the night. is the line with perfection. As well as this man has played, I think he's a little tight. Well, the strange drop shot, the forehand slice made him come in, but he, he came in straight to the forehand. He was sort of forced over the low part of the net to go there. But, gee, that was laced with danger. Here we go.
over an hour since his last break point. And somehow he keeps his faint hopes alive. Credit to him, he did do a few things there that he hadn't been doing, and he did get help unquestionably by a little tightness from the German, understandably so. On some of those returns, you know, he, he, it's hard for me to give Wally so much credit, but he did what Wally wanted. He shortened his swings. He didn't flash the blade as much on the return of serve. And that, that lifts your percentage chance of making the shot. Even on the break point there, he actually caught a bit of the frame. It was a short swing on the forehand. Caught a bit of the frame and landed in awkwardly for Sperrin. That was a talented volley, by the way, to finish the point. Well, there's a glimmer of hope. Did you, see that, uh, did you see that smile there as he sat down? I mean, a smile will release tension. And that's certainly something Carlos needs. Still a bit of work to be done here. Support just absolutely cascading down from the stands right now. Huge boost for the Spaniard. Well, it's going to take strength of character here for Sverev. He showed it there in that point, but to put away that disappointment, to put it in the past very quickly.
begins all He's infused them with belief. How much belief does he have? We've seen a few ghosts of smiles from Alcaraz tonight. That one was a little more meaningful. The two players are ready. Turned from very deep there, Carlos, but didn't quite maintain the depth. But I just wanted to make the point about the, the final point of the last game. It was almost the first time tonight he's played a point not to lose it as opposed to playing trying to win it. Didn't hurt him. Fifteen. Forty. Fifteen. first serves in the game when he tried to serve this match out just didn't quite find the same location as he has done to this stage of this particular game for the German 6-5 third set he leads by two sets to love reset and regroup from Zverev after what must have been a disappointing run of three games against him. about 
I think she, he was maybe having a little word about Zverev getting close to the shot clock and she hadn't given him a warning, whereas he's been given one. Well, we talked about at least one, probably two close sets if he's to get, take this to five or to actually win it. He's going to have to win this in a tiebreaker. There's no question we're seeing a little bit of lack of trust in the forehand for Zverev. A few occasions now he's decelerated on that side. No hand prank ever on that forehand from Alcaraz. Giving them cause to hope. <laughs> it's almost like he's looking forward to this exciting challenge, isn't it? In, in his in his eyes, there, don't you think? I agree. Most of us are dreading these moments. I think. <laughs> Great dig from Zverev. Easy to look at Carlos, but what does he do from there? Hook it inside in. I mean, look at how far into the doubles line he was at that particular stage. Almost has to a winner. All I know is he, he didn't even look like clearing the net with that. That, that landed well below the tape.
Do you just try and pick a side here? I mean, Zverev serving on this outside in the last game was immaculate out wide. Or do you hope he doesn't hit his target? Court to the line for sure here. I'm not sure why he would go to the forehand. And Alcaraz, with that amazing movement and change of direction he possesses, was there easily. the final shot that got the applause but it should have been the two shots prior that's what kept him in it playing not to lose to the knockout. Thankfully, Sasha okay on the ankle front. This ball going out too, I think. But he makes sure of it. That was going to land fraction wide, I think, that ball. This is why five sets builds and creates drama. Five, two. Right now, there's not a finish line in sight. Under the nighttime sky here in Melbourne, a luminous piece of skill from Alcaraz. From the depths of despair to four set points. Uh, 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 
Dennis, what a joy to watch. Great start from Zverev. The pitch, you know what it was in that tiebreak? It occurred to me that Love it was team. one great shot per rally that was winning it for him. At the start of the match, it was like a frenzy. It was like he's trying to hit five knockout punches in the one rally. All of a sudden, he's playing tennis. He's blocking, he's chipping, he's throwing a few up high, bunting a few returns back, and then one strike to win the point. <laughs> That was a little like how he started the match, throwing haymakers as opposed to combinations. The X factor that he brings to a tennis court for fans is that you simply aren't sure what's going to come off his racket every single time he sets up for a point. his chains, Zverev, in moments like 15, that. 14. There would have been a legitimate shot. He was so tough to go around him. Yeah, the body was the play, wasn't it? Doesn't mean you try to hurt someone, but you've got to handcuff him. It's full of big moments, isn't it? A five set drama. This is another. immediately in the start of the fourth set for the world number two. And another one of those moments, Wally, where you just needed to see him ask the question of the pass. Yeah, ball was coming across his body, tried to change direction. Nothing's come easy tonight for Carlos, there's no doubt about that. And it's a lot of it's just due to the quality of this man's game. But um, patience, patience. It was a game of errors once again from Carlos.
love 15. Tell you what, that was some return when you actually look at where he contacted it. He's, per he's persevered. He hasn't made that a lot, has he? Well, let's have a look at this. This is above his shoulders, isn't it? Does that mean he's getting used to the bounce, Mark? Solid volley there. Probably wishes he'd done that a few times with the tiebreak. Approached on the backhand wing as opposed to the forehand. Kind of like to see players go back cross court there from where Carlos was because that opponent's always going to the middle of the court there after they're tracking that ball. And if you don't fire it quickly enough down the line, that's a pretty simple volley for a pro player. Mm hmm. followed by Max Seven. 15, You'd think this would hurt Sverev here. I mean, he's he's up the break in the third, can't serve it out, loses it in a tiebreaker, then gets up an early break. Alcaraz is gaining momentum if he comes back into this now. What a start to this fourth set. One game of four seconds. And Zverev with some less than perfect movement to that volley went away from the net on the diagonal. Well, I can tell you rarely, when I'm sitting in a commentary box with a fellow commentator, I see an outpouring of joy from my fellow commentator. You are loving this. We are loving it. This is special. Two amazing, magnificent tennis players here in action. I will never, ever support the end of five sets for men's tennis. 15, no. You, you cannot get this drama no. in best of three. You cannot. We will lose so much in the sport if we did. Somehow we've still got to shorten the matches, Pitch. That we can do.
you know, the, the worry for Sasha now, though, is he's, he's poked the bear. The bear's awake. How good was that rally? Cabeza, Corazon, Cojones. That's what his grandfather used to say to him. Head, heart, and I'm sure you know what the third one meant. And he has shown all three tonight. He's done an amazing job there, Wally, to bounce back, having dropped that opening game of this four set. That would have been some significant headwind for most players. Yeah, but all of a sudden, Pitch, you know, I'm sitting on the sideline in the first two sets, I'm just scratching my head because I, I can't see a way forward for him. But now I'm watching him play it, it, it's calm, it's measured, I'm not seeing the wild errors. If he misses, it's by small margins. And even if he's down, you know that there's a way forward, there's a, there's a plan. I mean, you know, in that tie break, some of those great shots were preceded by some great scrambling, some clever slicing, some, some real stubbornness to stay in the point. So, look, he may win, he may lose, but it's starting to make sense. Done. Shakespeare once wrote, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. And you do sense that this man has had it thrust upon him. 20 years old, and he has also already brought up some of the most special memories of many people's recollection of tennis. He has been breathtaking tonight. What's he doing different on that no. backhand, Wally? Because now he's making it. The, the second serve, bouncing high to his backhand, where he steps in. He was missing, miss hitting it so often early. Well, Fitzy, the temperatures dropped to about it's probably 17 degrees down here now, so it's much cooler. So you're not getting the same life out of the court. But it, everything he's doing is just much more measured. He's within himself. He's playing within himself. That was a, a short, simple squeeze. There's a block. Slice. He's staying in the court. Got a little excited, but he's prone to that. But it's just much closer to his best tennis.
So I'm sticking by my theory. To come back from two sets to love, you need to win one, but probably two close sets. One close set down. He's going to have to win another close one, you'd think. And against this serve, it is still no walk in the park, is it? 14-15. Yeah, I don't know what the wind predictor feels like, but it certainly still favours Zverev this situation right now. neutralize any turn when the Alcaraz has picked up with that serve. So maybe the way I see it is this set, even money. But if Alcaraz wins this set, he's favorite. What do you think? I'm going to go all Zen on you. I just want to live in the moment. <laughs> Fair enough. Here it is. That was the start of the match, 60% right now. Zverev still very much, percentage-wise, the favor of the winner. Oh, I can't see that. I cannot see 78-22. I see 50-50. Yeah. Maybe 55-45, Sasha, but, but not 78-22. That, for me, is ridiculous to all on serve whoever wins this set wins the match Cover the court for a big man. First step is great. It's powerful. He's got those long strides. But you know what I like, Fitzy, is just how measured he's played this evening. He just keeps asking tough questions of Carlos. Carlos certainly imploded in those first two sets. We've got a match on our hand now, but it's very apart from maybe just getting a little tense. The closing stages of the third has been just about perfect. Oh. oh, if at first you don't succeed, when he served for Wimbledon, he tried a drop shot and lost it. Serving for the championships against Novak. Next point. What does he do? He does it again. He has no bounds when it comes to confidence in what he can do. Should he see any restrictions on the horizons yet at once at his age? Potential as does this match still 3 2 to the Spaniard in the fourth.
He's got a racket shot going on there, Fitzy. <laughs> Two to be strong, he's in for the long haul. I, I would have thought, though, that he would have a stash of them in there with the right tension, if it's the same tension. Everyone's a little different as well, isn't it? He's been out for, you know, out there for a while. Maybe he wants a couple of fresh ones potentially yep. coming for the start of the fifth. Maybe a fresh one that's half an hour old, like has been strung half an hour before, yeah. is different to the one that was strung overnight at the same tension, I'm sure. Time. Good service. Listen to this. They don't care what time it is. Zverev had the engine running, the getaway car, about an hour ago, thinking that he was going to be in it. Still work to be done. You know, he's been magnificent yeah. very, uh, tonight. Really has. So impressive. Such maturity on a tennis court here. Hasn't wavered. Let's listen. In amongst the rubble of the opening couple of sets, you just didn't think he had these shots tonight, did you? He got marooned in the middle of the court. It's not a bad forehand at all from Zverev. The racket hit speed there. Calmer moments, he has gone back to the backhand every time he's approached and kind of come away with a point. You go back to the tiebreaker, and the couple of times he came in on the forehand, and that's what turned the tide. Yeah. But he make those decisions in a, you know, in a heartbeat. Really, he just made a couple of wrong ones, possibly there. But he's certainly on track here, is Sasha. He's dangerous still with his serve and Three probably, well, he's up two sets to one, so why wouldn't he be favourite?
Dropping first serves like Steph Curry drops three pointers. It has been an absolute serve clinic from Zverev tonight. You know, you take four hands like that for granted with this young man. There was a time tonight, wasn't it, when you felt as though it was the supremacy of wishful thinking rather than reality that he could find enough of these to actually get himself back into the match, but he has done. Didn't hit a four-arm winner in the opening set. Five in the second, seven in the third. He's already found four in this fourth set. I, I just don't think any, any of us or most players have the imagination to even try this shot. Why would you hit from a high ball under a slice and drop shot at just the, it tipped the net, by the way? Carlos play um, there's part of me that doesn't want him to change I know you've been sitting there tonight and you've been absolutely spot on you know this is a results based sport and ultimately you're going to get judged on how you win or how much you win but there is something about the way that he plays that is just so attractive that even if he didn't come away with a whole host of majors that was in the double digits I still feel as though he's going to create a ripple in the sport that is just going to be so healthy for everybody. Well, Pitch, once it is known, it is known. I mean, the way he's playing now, every junior around the world is watching him play and seeing the possibilities. He may very well, he'll take the game to another level. There's no doubt about it. But um, I've learned a bit about you two in the course of this match. I've just been listening to the two of you, and it's occurred to me that you both show ponies. You were so excited about the brilliance. I'm like a hard hat blue collar guy. I'm just loving the digs on return, the fight, just scrambling, you know, trying to stay alive in this match. We're, we're very different. <laughs> Love. He likes to be considered blue collar, Wally. Yeah. But deep down, where's white? Is that a blue collar suburb that he lives in? Thirty love. Yes. It is not a blue collar suburb. And 
Sasha keeps going about his business like like the professional that he is. He's done really well to shorten these points again. I know the serve helps, but you can see he hasn't retreated. 40 love. His service is holding up as you'd expect, and he, he's playing magnificently here. And with this serve from 4 all, he holds this point and goes to 4 all from 4 all in the fourth, leading two sets to one. He's incredibly dangerous. It's nothing to worry about that backhand return now. He was getting a lot of free points from that and a lot of short balls off it early. Now he's asking the question to his box, what's going on here? Where do I go with that second ball? At first, I thought was he just trying to avoid the ball, kid, but I, I think his foot is bothering him for sure. Well, fingers crossed, it's nothing to do with an ankle. We all know that history. It definitely proppy, wasn't he? I, I think it's toes. I think it was blisters. determined can Sasha keep him at bay time violation warning from Sasha but just another breathtaking point what do you say the speed of Alcaraz here So if he loses this set in match, he might want to look back at the drop shot on the previous point as to why he played that yeah. 
but then, you know, the, the scramble is there, that previous point, and even that return there, just jag it back, jag it back, give yourself a chance, use your superior athleticism and fitness at this stage of the match to get over the line. I'll tell you, this whole thing hinges on this man's first serve. But the fun and the flair comes when he Alcaraz gets it back. just how good he is on the defense. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it is absolutely <laughs> awesome, the tennis that both these men are playing now. But when they do their video analysis post-match, they're probably both going to go, you know what? I'm not approaching to the forehand ever again. <laughs> it just doesn't win. It's amazing how many players don't know it, Wally. They don't. Thank you, players are ready. Thank you. What you love about the great players is they rarely lose their identity under pressure. 15 love. Utter faith in the way that they play and the outcome that that brings. Speaking of stubborn, how stubborn is Zverev? I mean, he's hurting, and he is fighting. Please. Sasha just asking for the big screen inside the stadium there, not to have a close-up of one of the two players. It's just a little off-putting. Just get the wide shot. turn with speed the three hours into this match and uh 15 13 very yeah. unleashed on that backhand it was back so fast completely late there carlos Thank <laughs> you. 
here we go. Out of nowhere. 15, 14. Alcaraz at breaking point. What a backhand from Zverev. Zverev is five, And he breaks Alcaraz and perhaps in the process breaks the Spaniard heart too. And maybe, guys, you just don't come into Zverev. Forehand or backhand side. What a laser of a pass that was. Yeah. Respect. Well, they've earned that. He may have been the lighthouse and the uh, lightning rod for a lot of stuff off court, Zverev, in the last couple of years. But on the court, you have to respect that kind of shot, this kind of desire and character that he has shown. Time. Look at that. been here before he couldn't ice it then Thank you, the that is produced Please. beautifully and exports misery take him over the finishing line Surely yeah. that's what Sverev needed to win a tough backcourt point. To add to what you would suspect he might get out of his serve in these next few points. You know what's interesting when these guys do approach? They, they approach so hard. They just crack the ball and go, and they there, there's no split step. They actually have no time to split their step, and they tend to run into the volley. I'm not sure I would have played that. No, and I'm not sure anyone else in the world would try this at this stage either. Quite remarkable.
Sí. Is Zverev about to cross the Rubicon? He has never been the top five player at a major before. defeat and breathe new life into the contest but Zverev bounced back from having been up a break in the fourth to close out the Spaniard and he has done it in some style and I'm very confident Mike there was some emotion on his big brother's face there they were subdued in the box but they must be so proud what a performance, what a match that was. It evolved into something so special. He's got a volume of work to create in this sport, but he has already made an impact. And although, as you can see, quick to get off and disappointment for sure for the Spaniard, one thing is crystal clear, vodka clear, is that he is a shining light in men's tennis and he will leave the sport in a better place. Yeah, well said. But this is his morning. He said he was fresher than when he took on Alcaraz at the US Open. He had played almost the same amount of time and yet it simply, he said, hadn't taken as much out of him. He was proved correct. The biggest win at a major in terms of ranking of his career. And look at that emotion etched on his face. He's with Jim Courier. Congratulations, Sasha. For two and a half sets, you were playing some of the best tennis we've ever seen you play, and then it got complicated. How did it get complicated, and then how did you finish this match off? Well, uh, well, I mean, look, I'm playing one of the best players in the world, especially over the last two years. He's been number one and number two uh, constantly. You know, he's won two Grand Slams, and. You know, when you're up 6-3, six, six, or 6-1, six, 6-3, six, five, two, you start thinking. I mean, we're, we're all human and, uh, you know, it, it's a great honor to, to play against guys like him. And uh, then when you're so close to winning, obviously your brain starts going and uh, it's not always helpful. But um, I'm happy that I got into the end. I think, you know, I, I fought back quite well in the fourth set, um, didn't let go, and then uh, very happy to finish the match. Yeah, it was never going to be easy with Carlos. Never. He's such a great fighter. You've been playing lots of tough matches this whole tournament. You've played a lot, a lot of time on court, a lot of sets. How is your body holding up? We saw you get the medical timeout with your feet. They're all taped up. Um, give us an overall assessment on, on what's going on with your body right now. 
I feel I feel fine. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to play this game. Not going to play this game. Novak played that with me last year. Come on. I mean, no. are you dealing with blisters? What's going on with the feet? Yeah. Um, well, I have a lot of blood under my my toenails, so that, that's that's quite painful. Um, you know, I, I take them out every single match, but then obviously when when you play and when you run a lot, uh, they they come back. Um, so. Yeah, just just had to retape it, but um, you know what? I would much rather feel the way I'm feeling right now, with maybe a bit of pain here and there, and be in the semifinals than be at home right now and, and watch this tournament. So um, that's why I'm saying I'm fine. I'm, I'm happy to be here, and I'm, I'm ready to get going. Well, you had a lot of time at home a couple of years ago. You had a terrible injury at Roland Garros, took you away from the game for six months. You came back in Australia last year, and you weren't the player that you are today. It was a long process. How difficult has that journey been over the last 12 months to reclaim your game? You're now into your second major semifinal since then. It's pretty darn impressive. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean... It was, it was a very difficult moment, obviously, in my career and in my life generally because, um, you know, even if I would have lost that match against Rafa at the French Open, it's Rafa, anything can happen, and obviously he's won it 14 billion times. So um, it, it, I think a lot of players have lost to him there, but, you know, having, having in the back of my mind that I need to win one match in the next three months to, to become world number one, that was the most painful part for me, and I had to start over. I had to start from zero, and uh, I'm, I'm happy to be back in the top ten. I'm happy to be back in major semifinals and, you know, hopefully playing for titles again. So let's look ahead to the semifinals. Now that you're there again, you get a day off tomorrow. You'll be back on Friday. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to take on another very tall, talented player like yourself and Daniel Medvedev. You guys have played a lot, but this will be your first time playing in best of five and in a major. What do you expect from that match? Uh, yeah, uh, he's been kicking my ass a lot uh, over, the last, over the last year or so. Um, but maybe this will be it. This will be the place. I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, counting, I'm counting on all of you guys' support. Um, you know, I, I love playing in Australia. I always say it. You know, we, we as players, we always say in New York is the most energetic slam and the loudest and the craziest. But for me, the crowd is the best in Australia. Because in, in my opinion... <laughs> In my opinion, the, the, the energy and the noise is just as loud, but, um, you know, I feel like the, the Australian crowd has, has real tennis knowledge. And, uh, you know, they're the most respectful crowd. They're the most, you know, just, just nicest to play in. You know, they know when to be loud. They know when to be quiet. They, um, so I, I enjoy being here. I'm talking too much. I'm talking way too much. Everybody wants to go sleep. I know that. I'm sorry. I'm excited. So, I don't know. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Congratulations, Sasha Zverev, into the semifinals in the Australian Open.